I am going to give you a lesson on pi. You all have been working with perimeter uh -huh. and area of a lot of different shapes. I wanted to show you where this kind of comes from. So when we talk about perimeter of a square, <coughs> we're talking about going all the way around the outer edge, right? Like fencing around your yard. Uh -huh. And so it would be 10 centimeters plus 10 centimeters plus 10 centimeters plus 10 centimeters, right? So it would be basically the length of the side times four, four square, would be your perimeter. Now, circles sort of have a, tank, a thing that's kind of like a perimeter too. It's this line that goes around the outside. Now notice that the circumference of the circle then is going to be less than that. But there is something similar here, which is that the line that goes through here and through the middle is the same as the side of my square. So if I go through there, I have a line going across my circle from side to side, and it goes through the center, then that also for a circle has a name. So we talked about the circumference. Who can remember the name of the line that goes across? The vertex. Not the vertex. The vertex is a little point. The radius. The radius is close. Diameter. Good. Andrew remembered both of them. No, you didn't. You remember the radius, though. So radius is, radius is half of the diameter. The radius is from the center to the outer side here. But the line that goes all the way across is called the diameter. All right, so what we're going to look at today is the relationship between the circumference and the diameter. And the Greeks did it. They started out manually by measuring, and so we're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to make a little black mark here on my circle. Start there. All right. And I'm going to make a mark where we're going to start rolling our circle along this line. All right, and I'm going to need somebody's help for that. So, Ben, how about you be my helper, right? What I want you to do is I want you to start right where the, that mark, you know, make those two marks line up. And then I want you to roll it until you get to where it's, that thing reaches the bottom of the paper again. All right, have you got it? All right, so keep it nice and even. And keep it on the line. You can use two hands. On there yet? Yeah. All right. All right. Now what I'm going to do is this was our beginning point. That's this was our ending point. So that's like stretching. That's our circumference. Yeah, that's our circumference. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I've got it on the widest part of my circle. I'm going to make a mark. There's one time. two times. A bit. Three. three times and a bit more. It's a little oh, bit more. No, oh, ah, okay. Uh -huh. So you've heard of this before. All right. So yeah, it's a little bit more than three times. It's and <clears throat> this is when the Greeks figured this out and they and they were able to calculate it. The they started dividing and it it went on and on and on, and it went on for so long that they had to call it a different kind of name. There was this, this concept for the relationship between the diameter and the circumference, and it's very important. Any time that you want to figure out the area of a circle, any time that you want to figure out the volume of a cylinder, you have to use this thing that they called pi. Why did he, uh, he call it pi? Well, pi. pi is one of the letters of their alphabet, and so they decided to give it its own little symbol. Is that the letter? All right. Because if they, if they wanted to use the number, my goodness, I want to show you all something. Why don't you go to the end of the mat there? This is called an irrational number because it goes on forever. It does have a little bit more than three, but I'm going to show you. I printed this off for you today. It's one this, is, this is pi to 100,000 digits. 
But this idea of pi then is something that is important whenever you work with circles. So anytime you do volume of a cylinder, volume of a sphere, anything that uses circles, you're going to need this idea of, of pi and as that special symbol. Right. So when you're doing it, obviously you're not going to, yeah, you're not going to do it. And we've talked about rounding too. You're not going to use all of this number, right? That'd be impossible. So if you go way back here to the beginning. So it's right. actually three. Come on down here. I'm going to show you with. All right. If you look at it and, and you want to round it off, I'm not going to hurt your pencil. If you want to look at this, 3.14 is already four hundredths. Remember, we talked about decimal fractions recently. So that's already really small. Remember how small a hundredth is? Okay. And then one thousandth. So. It's, you know, the fraction at this point is pretty small, so most people when they use pi, they'll just do 3.14. That's close enough.